What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So a quick video today, we're going to talk about how to use the shrink fatten tool in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the shrink fatten tool is probably a little bit lesser known tool that you can find by tapping into edit mode and then clicking on this option right here for shrink and fatten. And so usually inside of Blender, if you select something like this, uh, this gem, for example. And so when you have a shape like this one selected, usually if you tap the S key to scale it, what it's doing is it's scaling it based on whatever you have selected up here. In this case, it's the individual origin, right? So when I scale this, it's scaling based on the origin point of this object, which is this little dot right here. And so the problem with that is notice how if I scale something like this gem out like this, um, it starts kind of like flattening out the topology and making things not look as good, right? So it's not necessarily as smooth of a scale or a size change as we would like. Well, if you come in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and scale this up a little bit, and note that if you do select something else, like the 3D cursor location, remember that your object will scale based on that. So the scale tool is basically based on the origin or the pivot point that you select. And so what the shrink fatten tool does is instead of scaling based on that individual point, what it does is it's going to move your objects based on the face normals. Remember that the face normals are basically the direction that the faces are facing. So if I click on the shrink fatten tool, click and drag like this, notice how what this is doing is this is moving those faces based on the direction that they're facing. And so what that's doing is that's giving me a little bit better or smoother transition and movement of my object like this. So notice how the movement is different than what we have over here. So this can be especially valuable on things like cylindrical shapes where you don't want to necessarily select them and then use the scale tool because they kind of move around on you. You can't override that with hotkeys, but um, it's a little bit easier to just use the shrink fatten tool because what that's going to do is that's going to let you use the face normals um, in order to set that thickened direction. So this is a fast, easy way to shrink or fatten just like it sounds um, objects like this one. And so this can be especially helpful in situations where um, the scale tool doesn't necessarily give you the results that you're looking for, right? So like with this monkey right here, if I scale this, notice how we're getting a lot of up down, it's just kind of messing up the way that this looks. Um, however, if we were to do it on this monkey head right here using shrink fatten, so if I get a wireframe and I use shrink fatten this way, notice how it's giving me a lot better result in here than we were getting previously. So um, it's very helpful in situations where the scale tool just isn't quite getting you what you want. And so one thing to note about this is it is driven based on your normal direction. And so if I toggle my normal directions on, notice how if I use shrink fatten over here, everything's going to act as expected, right? Like everything's shrinking and fattening in and out like this, like it's supposed to. However, with this one, notice how those normals are facing inward, not outward. So if I do the same thing, right? I do an alt shift click and I try to do it this way. Notice how they're gonna move in different directions, right? This one's moving in the wrong direction over here because it's driven by that normal direction. So if I come in here, do an alt click and I go to mesh, normals and I flip those normals like this. So notice how now you can see that those normals are facing outward. Now the shrink fatten tool is going to work as it should. And so sometimes this tool will give you better results than the scale tool. So it's definitely worth knowing where it is and how it works. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.